Hello, friends. Uncle Marv back with another episode of the IT Business Podcast here live at PAX 8 Beyond on Radio Row, day one of the event, and it has been fantastic. And, of course, a lot of news being released here, none of which is more surprising than what I've got for you now. Uh, he's already <laughs> laughing, but that voice you hear, Ken Patterson, who is now going to be at Total. Ken, how are you? Good. How are you, man? I'm good. It's been a long time listener, first time caller. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> you know what? It, and it takes me grabbing you out of the crowd to say, "Come on over." <laughs> so, not true. Not true. No. I'm here. All right. So big news. You're going to be at Total. Yep. And, yep. And uh, I'm actually doing a visit to their office. Uh, yeah, that's going to be great. I'm going to get to see you again. I'll be there. Yeah. I'll be at the office this week. Um, yeah. You know, it's. Uh, when I, coming from the MSP world for me, you know, I was an MSP for so many years before I joined PAX 8, you know, I didn't, uh, I didn't want to bounce around, you know, coming from that side, I, I spent a lot of years building MSPs and, you know, I built and sold my MSP years before that. And coming over to this side, I know that vendor, it seems like the vendor people move around a bit and I didn't want to do that. And so I was at PAX 8 for four years and I did my time and built the community into a really good spot and, had, and still love, obviously still love them. I'm here, I'm right. back in the, in the realm. And, um, you know, uh, I went to Taylor Business Group, great company, love the fact that they're building MSPs and teaching MSPs to be more mature because we all know, you know, a lot of MSPs are just calling themselves MSPs, right, and going through the motions, and we really want to get them, you You're know. You're calling me out there, aren't you? I'm not calling you out. <laughs> you are definitely not one of those. But, you know, the ones that want to listen and be more mature and have the ability to say, hey, I do need help, yeah. go to coaches and get them, you know, enter into peer groups. And I really do believe that's super important. Right. Um, so I still love what Taylor Business Group is doing. Um, but I really got a, uh, I just had an opportunity here to do some big things. Um, with a company that's doing cybersecurity, which has always been big for me because we know how sh what our shortcomings are in this industry as MSPs. And they just had the, it was just something special about Total that really lured me in. And I had actually been talking to Total for over a year and a half just in general, because um, some MSPs, of course, you know, our world, we all talk to each other, yep. kept saying, man, if they had a community like, you know, you could take on and help out with, and after, you know, a year and a half, two years of talking with them and just being friendly with them, um, they came back and said, hey, we've got some funding and we really like to invest heavily into the community. And what was different is they were talking about the community in the right way. They weren't just talking about, hey, we want more customers. They were saying, we want to build a community that works for the MSPs, some place where they can go and they can feel comfortable and they can feel heard and be a part of what it is that we want to build. And I thought, okay, wow, I have a vendor here who actually gets it. They don't have the tools yet, but they have a lot of the right ideas, right. and I could plug into that and make that better. So for me, being able to see that, and, and you know, I'm kind of a real, uh, I'm kind of a mushy guy when it comes to us as MSPs, because I've always been about us as MSPs. And I still consider myself an MSP. I did it for so long, and I care about it. There were a lot of vendors trying to get me to come along before I went to Taylor and beyond. Uh, ah, beyond. See, I plugged yeah, it right in there. there you go. Um, but I never, I never really got that sense that they really wanted to build community. There was a lot about, okay, what's your sales number going to be, and what's this, and what's that. It's like, no, no, you're not getting it. Yeah, it's. I sit on this side where I'm an MSP, and I'm in the media, yeah. so <laughs> you know, I will pimp up the ones that do get it. Yeah. The others, I'm not, you know, I'm not. I'm not going to diss them unless they really screw up. Right. But there are some that are starting to come around and realize, look, we've got to be true partners yes. in this. And the way to build partnership is through community. Mm -hmm. So now here's the question, because it sounds like you're going to be building this from the ground up. Is that the way it's going to work? Yeah, I mean, so they have, like I say, you know, community is not customers. You have customers, that doesn't mean you have community. Right. I think they've done a decent job already, but I wouldn't say that they have the full community, which is why they, you know, they, they came to me and said, you know, hey, come in, let's do this. Um, so for me, it's turning it into that full community, which, you know, I always say, you know, community isn't about just belonging to something. It's about belonging to something that makes you feel like it matters, right? And that not everybody gets that. When I was at PAX 8, what we did was, I just basically got the opportunity to be me as an MSP and talk to people and say, what is it that you need? What do you, how are we going to make you better? And then we could educate. And then through that, they came back and just said, hey, 
you know, I, now I understand X, Y, and Z. Now I know what to buy. So they're buying without being sold to. And I just thought, wow, this is a, a great concept because doctors don't go out selling, right? They, they prescribe you stuff. Yeah. It's a they same don't, idea. They don't have to sell, That's but, the, right. but the pharmaceuticals, they do well, a yeah, lot of yeah. selling. <laughs> I mean, now you're really going to drag us down a rabbit <laughs> yeah, hole. I mean, but in general, we should be more prescriptive like doctors because as MSPs, we have a solution that they need. We, we do much like a doctor does. A doctor checks us out and then gives us the solution. We have to do the same thing as MSPs. So why are we trying to sell like these car salesmen? Let's be more prescriptive and educate much like what you do with this podcast. Educate. Yeah, but hasn't there been this misnomer that a lot of times we get treated that way partially because techs have always kind of been the last run on the on the ladder. They're the lowest on the expense accounts right. list that, you know, you know, IT doesn't make <laughs> us money. It costs us money. And so that's one way they've looked at it. And of course, we do have some shysters. Well, in and back the in the day we were also told sell, 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 right? Yes. Because, and we didn't know how to sell because we were technical. Right. We fixed stuff, but we didn't know about finance, operations, sales, marketing, you know, it's a lot of stuff we didn't know. Oh, yeah. But we all learned it over time, and I think you're right. What happened was we started out just, okay, well, we know we got to sell. We read a book on sales, and we yep. did it that way, and that's what gave us that used car salesman feel. It's like, oh, these guys are just trying to sell us. Yeah. And now we're getting better. We're seeing much more mature MSPs do it in a different way, educate, talk about education, and also not just taking any customer, right? Making sure that you understand what's the right customer well, for you. Not just taking any customer, but actually making sure that what we have to offer solves the problem. Right. Because that's really what a lot of them are interested yeah. in. We've got this problem, can you fix it? Yeah. Yeah, I can fix it. But I can also prevent it from happening again. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a it's a different mindset. It's a different mentality. And once you just go down that path, you'll find the people that are your went from customers to now being your community. It now works hand in hand. And one thing that I've been talking a lot about lately is, and I wish I thought about it much earlier. Um, but as an MSP, we spend so much time talking about tech. But here's something new. So you let's just say you got traction and it made your business better. Well, why not tell your customers about traction? Why not teach them the same things that made your business better and you're showing them something that has nothing to do with technology, but now they're like, wait a minute, yeah, this, this helped my business. And when yeah. you help their business, they now want you to be a part of their team and yeah. you're gonna be someone that they always bring up in the conversation because you're not just throwing tech down their throat, you're actually talking about business solutions. When you can bring that to them as part of the whole package, then they're just going to look to you. Hey, by the way, I had this weird little thing happen. Um, should I be jumping into this? Or I saw this thing on the news about the cybersecurity hack. You know, should we be going down this road? And you should already be educating them with yeah. that stuff. But One of the best conversations I had with one of my clients is when he just finally said, do you use this in your business? And yes. I said, yes. And he goes, how? And I sat down and I said, here's it. Here's my dashboard. Here's what I'm doing. Here's my training. Here's yep. my stuff. And he's like, okay, and that works for you. I said, it has to. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, this is this is you know this is what I do for other companies, but it has to start with me. And from that point on, he then you know was able to ask me about other stuff. Well, right. how do you do this in your business, and how do you do that? So they're calling me about stuff that has nothing to do with you IT. You eat your own dog food. Yeah. You have to do it, and it, or drink your own champagne. People don't like to eat your own dog food. Um, Interesting story, I had the reverse of that happen to me. I had one of my techs out in the field and he was asking to deploy a solution and then the customer said, okay, so do you guys do this in house? Like, why, why is this taking so long? And he literally said, oh no, we don't use this, we use something else, but we, we, and boom, that just kind of just turned the whole entire thing. And that's when I realized, holy crap, we, we should be using it. Because first of all, you have a better understanding of something that you use all the time and your techs are more familiar with it, right? You're using yep. it in-house, they see it every day. Then when you go out there, they're much more comfortable putting it in place. And then like you said, the question comes up, yes, we use this too. How did, That's how we protect ourselves and we're supposed to be the ones that are protecting you. But of course, we're using the same solution. Right. And yeah, I, I, I wholeheartedly buy into that. You definitely should be drinking your own champagne. All right. So let me ask a couple of questions to, to take us out here. Let me start with the fact that you're here, even though you've moved on, but you're still here, uh, enjoying the festivities and stuff. Um, how are you 
how does it feel to be here? It's kind of like you're it's, at yeah. the ex-wife's house. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never got that feeling um, because we had such a, um, you know, the the culture at PAX 8 was such a, a family culture. I hate to say that because people are like, oh, family seems weird because it turns on you, right? Okay. But um, I'm still friends with all the people at PAX 8. I left PAX 8 on good terms, um, you know, they, they felt I got them to the right point, so it was okay, and we were all good, and, and I did my job there in building up that community, and I stayed close with all of them, so that was great. But coming back, um, I have a headache. Uh, last night was was crazy because I love seeing everybody, but I didn't get a chance to stop and do this, uh -huh. right? Have the actual conversations to a point because there was so many people, and it was just, hey, hi, hey, hi. But it was still a warm welcome it feels great to be back and be able to say, hey, we work with them because we are on the line, you know, totals on the line card, so we have a relationship with Pax 8. Um, and I love that. I love the fact that I get to deal with these people again because they were my family. We really did, um, you know, and, and we grew. We took a company, you know, Pax 8 just exploded during those four years I was there, and it was just cool to see. It went from those wingman outfits, right, the flight suits. Yes, um, can't to, forget those. Right, no, you cannot forget those. In fact, one of the partners when I first signed up with PAX 8, who was a friend of mine, said, okay, I'm in, but uh, we need a photo of Ken in one of those flight suits. So I did actually put a flight oh. suit on. It didn't fit me very well, but I did, <laughs> put one on. I did put it on. We took a photo, and he held up his end of the bargain and moved all his licenses nice. over to PAX 8. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a, definitely a sort of a homecoming, being able to come back and see everybody. Right. Um, you know, I got to talk to John Street, who's one of the best CEOs I've ever got to the, the pleasure of knowing. Um, I do miss... I do miss being able to go in the office and him bring me into his place and show me his piano and play a song right. or something. The guy is just a great human being. Um, and that's the way it is all the way down. All the people that brought me into PAX 8 are still there. I'm still great friends with them all. Um, and this event is crazy. That's the thing that's really yeah. blowing my mind is this was supposed to be Wingman 2020 and then COVID hit, right? Yeah. Yeah. And last year was their inaugural year and I, I, I couldn't come out last year. But coming out here and seeing what they did in only one short year is amazing. Double the amount of people that are it's, here. It's something else. They're, yeah. they're gonna, it's, it's hard to say outgrow a Gaylord's yeah, yeah. You know, venue, yeah. but they might have outgrown. Yeah, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a fact they did. I'm in a different hotel, so. Yeah. All right, so now this is super fresh and you're here. Uh, have you even have a, had a chance to think about what you're gonna start to build over at Total? And are you talking to MSPs here about that. Yeah, I mean, it's going to come up. Um, and we had a lot of talks about the why, right? You know, why why Total and Total, why can't, you know, why can't he be? You know, that's the, the whole thing. And it was that blend that made sense. You know, we're already talking about, we want to build uh, a real community internally and externally where MSPs can have a spot to go to and chat with each other, find other MSPs, a platform of, of such that we can build out and I can help moderate, piece that together. And also, I'm gonna do the same old thing. I'll be on social watching people when they have a problem instead of coming to me, which they always should. Anybody that has a problem with Total, come to me. Um, but when those people get crazy and get on social and start typing, you know, I'm gonna be right on there and say, hey, listen, we're not perfect, but let's talk about this. Let's find out what's wrong. Um, so that tied into our community with all the things that we're gonna do. We wanna build a real platform that's a place for the MSPs to come in and be able to do these different things. And we're gonna have different, um, we're gonna line it up differently so that they can have different groups. And they're almost like a Slack channel with different groups and stuff, but a bit more advanced and a bit more, uh, a, bit, a bit easier to navigate. Well, good, because I have trouble with Slack, even yeah, though yeah. my tech <laughs> so. All right, well, Ken, it was good to see you. It's funny, I always tell people, I, I you know, saw some people, it's weird that I could have seen people more in Florida, but I'm seeing them out on the road as right. much. Same with you, I mean, it's, yeah, when was it's the last true. time I saw you? I don't remember. Yeah, it might have been in Florida. <laughs> it might have uh, been, I don't yeah, know. But Orlando, not, uh, not Fort Lauderdale. Well, no, but we did see you in Fort Lauderdale on the bus. Oh, the bus. Yeah, we came in the bus. Yes, yeah. right. That was, right. Uh, was that Bardisi's thing? Yeah, well, it was me and George. Yeah, we yeah. came up with the idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, All right. a lot of fun. Well, uh, enjoy yourself and uh, don't, uh, don't cry too much when you leave. Yeah, yeah, you know I'm going to cry. Why, <laughs> why are you going to do that? <laughs> I'm going to do it on your show right now. Uh, all right. <laughs> Ken Patterson there, folks, from Total. We'll probably have more 
from him when I visit their office there on Wednesday. So uh, that's it. Another interview from Radio Row wrapped up, and we'll be back with more later. We'll see you. Holla.